everybody, we're here with Ty Sons Kwiatkowski and Ty, uh, amazing match today. But I, I want to kind of talk to you about like your story about how you came up uh, through the ranks and everything. So first question for you is, how did you actually get into the game? Like who got you started? Um, actually, my grandma. Um, both my parents worked, so um, my grandma would pick me up from school uh, most days, and uh, she would go and play with her um, friends at the country club, and then, you know, when she was done, she would take me out on the court and feed me a couple balls when I was four, five, six years old, and that's, that was my first taste of the game, and I, I liked it a lot at the time, and, um, you know, she was amazing getting me into the sport, so... It, that's awesome, and I think there are a lot of reasons, of course, like why you would love tennis. And is there one specific or a couple specific reasons why you love the game so much? I mean, I love the game. It's uh, because I mean you can play it at any age. It's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, obviously, competition. There's some anxiety and some pressure and stuff, but um, you know, I really like going out on an afternoon and just hit, hitting balls with my coach and at the country club we practice in, like just the feeling of hitting the ball is a lot of fun. And, um, you know, to make a career out of it uh, is what I'm trying to do. And that's, uh, that's amazing to be able to do something that I love so much. Yeah, for sure. And, and Ty, I know it's probably been a while, but uh, like, if, do you remember your first tournament, like your very first tournament and like walk us through like how that experience was for you? I was, I think seven and I lost like, I think my first four matches, I played two tournaments. I lost them all 6-0, 6-0. I didn't win a game until like my fifth match. Um, but my grandpa has pictures, and apparently I uh, had a big smile on my face the whole time. So maybe it's uh, it's just been always uh, pretty fun for me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I love the sport very much. Awesome, and I think that's great foreshadowing for like why you're successful on, on the court, like on tour, because somebody, a lot of people who kind of lose like four in a row, they'd probably quit, maybe even after their first match. So like, what, what happened? Like, like, why did you keep going? Yeah, I mean, the tour is a microcosm of, of that. I mean, you play 30 weeks a year, and you're going to have stretches where you lose three, four, five matches in a row. And um, I came into this week having on a five-match losing streak. So uh, you just always have to have kind of a short memory and um, keep working hard. And a lot of those things you can't control. Um, the margins are really small, and, you know, you got to keep working hard and hopefully things will turn and I I haven't ever had a moment in my career where they haven't eventually turned so awesome Ty and as far as like motivation for you when you were a junior and you know even maybe now like are there any sorts of people who you look up to who really motivate you to kind of be like and sur surpass them uh, I mean my idol has always been Andy Murray the way he competes the way he holds himself on and off the court um, you know, he's, his respect for the game, his respect for others. Uh, he's always been a big idol of mine. Um, you know, I, I've always gotten a lot of, um, you know, passion from my teammates in college and, um, my coach always believes in me. So whenever I have tough times, it, you go back to the people that, you know, started with you and believe in you the most. Yeah, and I mean, obviously you had an incredible career at UVA, and a lot of people are proud of you there and everywhere. Uh, like, at UVA when you were playing, what is maybe one or two parts of your game that you feel like you improved the most as a result of attending and training at UVA? Well, the biggest thing is, I mean, I came into college a kid at 18, probably mentally even younger than that. Um, and I just matured as a human being, uh, realized that, you know, the sport is a lot bigger than, you know, myself and what it means to play for a team what it means to play for something bigger than yourself and uh, that was that's kind of what I'm trying to put together here for myself and my career you know it's it's tough to play 30 weeks a year for yourself but if you can do it for you know a team obviously it's not exactly like a team in college but um, you, know, you have you know reasons to find motivation when it's when you're tough and it's hot and you know, you're down and out. Um, those are the times where you can, you know, find motivation from your team. And I think maybe a lot of other coaches can learn from maybe this, answer this question potentially. But, I mean, you talked about how you play for something bigger than yourself. And, that you know, that's not easy to do. Like, a lot of people, it, it's obviously an individual sport and they're thinking of themselves and their careers. So, like, how did you 
end up being able to like inculcate that sort of uh, mentality in your mind and in your teammates as well, and then actually you know uh, take that and run with it. It was just a culture that was established from my second year of college. Um, you know, really appreciating you know what what your teammates have uh, are doing and getting to know them off the court. Um, you know, and if you can you know realize what kind of people they are, because at the end of the day. Uh, all those guys are really good guys, and, and whenever you have differences, you realize that you all have a common goal, and um, that's, that was the biggest thing. And uh, I mean, those guys are my closest friends, and you know, I can't wait to have more memories with them. And uh, it's nice that some of us are on tour now, so we get to spend a lot of time with each other. Yeah, it definitely is wonderful. And as far as college goes, I mean, you, you had so many championships, but what was, in your mind, the most enjoyable moment? What brought you the most joy out of all of your moments at U UVA? Oof, of my whole college experience, probably yeah. just uh, some of the travel days, a lot of fun, bus rides. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we had a lot of good times going and having birthday dinners. Um, Charlottesville is an amazing place, uh, doing so many things. Um, you know, obviously the, the the championships are really nice, and uh, the rings are cool to look at sometimes. But at the end of the day, the biggest thing is that those guys are um, those are the biggest things I got out of college, having those guys in my life. And uh, yeah, I mean, we my, we I text them every day, I Facetime every day, we talk a lot, joke, and uh, those guys are my brothers. So that's that's the biggest thing. Awesome, yeah, and for sure it's kind of proven that relationships are, are the most important thing in life, so it's amazing. Uh, kind of a like, weird side question, but do you have a favorite winery in Charlottesville? <laughs> Ooh, I do. Um, I it depends on, depends on what I'm going for. If I'm going for, like, with a bunch of friends, uh, King's Family is a great one. Uh, it's got a good area and big seating for a lot of people. If I'm going on a date, I would say Jefferson Winery. Okay. Um, if I'm going just for a casual afternoon and I just want a little bit of everything, Pippin is great. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many things to do. I love Thursday nights, uh, going to Carter's Mountain, um, drinking some cider and looking over Charlottesville. That's great. Um, there's so many things to do in Seville, and that's why I continue to live there. And uh, it's nice. I feel like I'm on vacation when I'm off and not on the road. So... Um, the road is my home, and when I'm home in Charlotte, so that feels like vacation, so it's nice. Awesome, Ty. I feel like this is the most important part of the interview right here. <laughs> uh, great advice. But um, also, as far as the pro tour, so, like, what is maybe the biggest lesson that you've taken away, like, in your, I guess, relatively brief time on tour? Yeah, I mean, the tour is so different from coming from college. Um, you have to find something that, that makes the job in, uh, important for you, and you can find the passion because there are a lot of times when the travel is hard. You have to fly here, fly there. You know, your body is hurt, you know, and if you can find something to uh, make you realize why you're going through all those tough times, then you can find a way to keep going. And, and for a while I struggle with that, um, but I'm, you know, trying to work hard to find that uh, motivation every week, you know. Awesome, Ty. And, and so you talk about the travel. A lot of players, like for them, that's the toughest, especially if you, you know, miss family at home. But are there certain things that you do when you're traveling to make yourself more comfortable? Uh, I mean, I have some routines. And when I get to hotel rooms, um, I try to, I'd say, don't skimp on the travel. You know, if you can pay an extra $150 to have one less stop or a shorter layover, do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you got to make it as easy as, as possible for yourself if, if you can. A lot of the times it's really tough too, but yeah, I mean, try to keep the mind fresh as much as possible, really. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Ty. And so you talked about like not skimping, like when it's really important and will help your body, but also kind of relatedly, uh, any like financial advice, like just as far as I know it's so tough on the tour. I mean, you know, I'm not sure of the exact number, but it, I think they said something like, after 150, you know, like you're not making like much money or any like you're in the red or black, I guess. Yeah. But like, so how does that like how can players kind of like help themselves out with that? Oof. Uh, I mean, that's it's a really tough question. I mean, I've been in the red slash black, however you want to call it, yeah. um, since I started. And, you know, you have to really love the game because until I would say you're 
you know, 120 in the world, you're really not making any money. Um, so you got to play for the love of the game or, you know, whatever it is, if you really believe that you can get there. And uh, um, it's important to have financial backing, really. And I, I took out a loan to start my career. Um, so if, you know, you want to put pressure on yourself like that, I would say that hurt me a little bit because, you know, I was thinking about it all the time. Um, you can do that. I mean, hopefully, you know, you can get some sponsors, some agents. You know, that's always it's always very helpful if you have those things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a tough sport out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely agree. And I mean, yeah, if, if you were to, I mean, go back, which I mean, I'm, you've made the best decisions you can. Like, would you advise people like get like a loan? Is that like a better way to go about it rather than just paying, paying, and then, you know, having a debt? Uh, I mean, it all depends on your financial situation. If you have you know, family that's going to help you out or a private, you know, sponsor, yeah. and you don't need to do those things, but um, it really all just depends. I mean, yeah. you got to do what you got to do in order to, <laughs> you know, be able to pay for your flight to a tournament, you know? You're not making any money at these tournaments, but, sure. uh, yeah. yeah. Cool, man. And uh, just a couple other questions for you, like, uh, hopefully fun questions, but, like, what, what favorite TV show, like, what's your favorite TV show? And what's your favorite musician? Oof. Um, you can give a couple if you can't narrow it. musician is for sure the band Arizona. Huh. Um, they're great. Um, I love Tom Walker's music. He's really great. Great chill. Um, great vibes. Uh, guilty Pleasure is probably like Kygo, Chainsmokers. I've seen them live a few times, and that's been fun. Uh, favorite TV show, I watched the Game of Thrones all the way through. That was my big hype for the last decade. The last season is probably, I mean, I've had a pretty good life, so it's been, it was probably top five most disappointing things that's ever happened to me. I've heard. Yeah, that was, uh, it was very upsetting. If any of the directors ever watch this, I want you to know that you've disappointed me deeply, and uh, that's something I might not ever get over. I'm going to tag them all so that they have a good chance to see it, <laughs> but no problem. But uh, as far as, so, so the City Open, I mean, like, we obviously saw, like, how excited you got and, and great comeback today. Um, uh, what does it mean to you to, to qualify for basically, like, your the, the big home tournament for you? Yeah, like you said, this is my home tournament. I live in Charlottesville. Um, my, my parents grew up in Northern Virginia. Um, most of my family is here in Northern Virginia and Arlington. So to have them massive support all the time, I really do feel at home here. I love the conditions. I love the court. I love the balls. Everything is, is really great for me. Nice. Um, so to have that crowd support today, I mean, it was almost like playing back in college and I heard a lot of go-hoos in the crowd. And I don't know, I, I absolutely love it. It's my favorite tournament of the year. Awesome to hear that. Yeah, a lot of people with UVA uh, shirts on, so that's great to see. Um, as far as your pre-match uh, meal and also post-match, can you kind of maybe give us an idea of maybe like one dish that you like really get to go to for before and also for after recovering? Mm, pre-match, I usually go uh, light sandwich. Very simple, turkey cheese, nothing too special. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, try to get something more substantial, whether that's a pasta or like chicken or salmon with rice. Um, love Chipotle, big Chipotle guy. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. I, I really don't have too much uh, of a diet. I really, I mean, I probably could do better with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing special really. I mean, I love to eat and I love to eat good restaurants. So, you know, when I'm on the road, I search the nicest restaurant, well, not nicest, but like, you know, great restaurants to go with my coach and uh, family. And so, yeah, I mean, I definitely try to eat good for sure. Awesome. Ty. Just a couple more questions. I know you have to run, but um, as far as uh, recovery, like, do you have like a, a routine that you usually go through? Yeah, um, I use a uh, this product called MG12. It's a magnesium uh, that I, you know, it's basically uh, similar to Epsom salt, but it's basically it's a magnesium salt. I take a bath in that, um, kind of help magnesium get in my body. Nice warm bath feels good. Um, I have a Norma Tech machine to help refresh the legs, uh, you know, try to hydrate really well. Um, one, one product I use also for my drinks is the right stuff. 
Um, it has a lot of sodium. It's really great. Uh, I've been using it since college. Um, it's a great product. And, uh, yeah, I mean, those are the three things I definitely do to get my body ready and then, you know, try to sleep well. Sleep's huge. Awesome. Appreciate that, Ty. And so one last question for our audience, mainly 3-0 to 5-0 players, I'd say. Uh, what is one key tip that you can give them to help them improve their tennis games? Hmm. Um, hit the ball back in the path it comes through. So if the ball comes high, um, you're going to want to hit it back in the same plane it comes through. You know. So if the ball's low, you know, there's no need to you know, try to send it back with a lot of spin. You know, just kind of stay through the ball. And, uh, yeah, no need to overplay. I mean... Tennis is a game of airs, not a game of winners. Um, so I would, I would, that would be the biggest thing is I tell them, and you know, if you can put more balls in the court than your opponent, you're most likely going to win. Awesome, Ty. Great seeing the hometown guy win, and uh, best of luck in the main draw. Appreciate Thanks it. a lot. Thanks.